taken from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Median. For the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child, has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 
the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and in the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Did 
Did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you've kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them anywhere else. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and, and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of uh, housekeeping notes I wanted to mention I, that all the poinsettias that you see tonight in the front and in the back of the church are, are memorials to and, and in honor of folks. And I want to thank all the church members who provided those. And uh, it's, it's quite a sight. I had predicted 100. I, I guess it's a good thing I was wrong on that. I don't know where we'd put them all if we had 100, cause this is, but it's just beautiful. We're going to do communion tonight and then silent night to close the service. Um, I already spoke with uh, my dear friend Lois. I'm going to 
Bob and I will bring communion back to you, Lois, and to any of your family members, you can either come up and receive or we'll serve the whole family at the same time, whatever you'd prefer. If anyone else would like me and Bob to bring communion to you, we will do that. Otherwise, we will come up row by row, and that's kind of a COVID thing, uh, just one family at a time, first here and then over here. Please linger at the, at the altar as long as you need to and want to, but we'll try to create as much separation as we can also. And then uh, when we sing Silent Night, we're going to kind of have everybody not leave your row, but scrunch a little bit toward the center aisle, and we're going to form a circle that way again so we don't have to all get too close together as we are trying very hard to be uh, aware of all concerns regarding uh, the, the pandemic. We've been uh, open and we, all of our regular members are vaccinated, I can tell you that, but we do want to take those concerns carefully and we thank you for being here tonight. And with that, um, also I promise the message is short. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Again, I do want to welcome you home. Welcome home. This is such a special night, and I am so glad we've all gathered here this evening. And those of you that are watching on the video of this service, let me also welcome you and say good morning and Merry Christmas. The message of Christmas is a message of joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's the reason we're here tonight. That's the message the message that an angel brought to those poor shepherds working in the fields late at night, the, the poorest of the poor, the lowliest of the low, the night shift shepherds. In Luke 2, we're reminded that this is good news of great joy for all the people, and that's us too. We're here to welcome and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and to remember the promise, the promise that he will come again. So welcome home. The shopping is done, the cards are all in the mail, and I hope the hard work of Christmas is done for you too. You can relax for just a few minutes anyway. You can worship as we receive the elements of Holy Communion too. If you're tired of all the hustle and bustle and commercialism and headaches and worries, can you let this night and this message be the start of helping you recall and rediscover the true meaning of Christmas? I hope so. Even though this is not our heavenly home, it is great to gather in God's house on this night. For as we gather together, we are promised that Christ is among us. He promised he would be here. We're here because we need to know the joy of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born into humanity to save us all. He is why we celebrate Christmas. I hope you'll find that you do need to be here tonight. As we entered into Advent a few weeks ago, I declared that I would not succumb to the commercialism and the stress of the holiday season this year. And that worked, it worked pretty well, but we all know there is stress at this time of year, and I'm not immune from that stress either. I need to be here tonight too. And as you noticed at the start, I was pretty stressed when we started tonight. So whether this is your first time here, or your only time here, or you're here every Sunday, this is a time when we all come together as an extended church family to celebrate what makes us people of faith. The birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the best Christmas gift ever. And it is the real gift that you unwrap by your presence here tonight. And for those, again, watching on the video, it's that last present under the tree this morning. It's got your name on it, too. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah reminds us that we once walked in darkness, but today we remember that a child is born who shines the light into the world. John's scripture declares, in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light of Christ is all around us every day and every night. You see it here tonight in the Crispon tree and all the other lights, but it's not just here at church. When you go home tonight, think about this, and you look at the lights on your tree, or when you're driving through the neighborhood enjoying the Christmas decorations, think about this. Every light bears witness to the light of Christ born this day. 
Every church is part of the light of Christ. If you're searching for that light in your life, then I encourage you to look right here. No, we are not as large as we used to be. Not as large as maybe we'd like to be, but the light still shines here. And you can be part of that light. If you're just visiting or watching from home, please know that you're welcome here. If you haven't quite figured it all out, that's okay. This is a pl safe place to come and explore. Let Christ into your life every day. Start right now. You can give a gift to the baby Jesus, a gift to yourself too. Ask God to rekindle the light of Christ in your heart tonight. And you know what? He'll do just that. Return your heart to God tonight. If you've already done that, then take this time to remember that moment and rededicate yourself to that decision tonight. But if this is your first time, you don't need to shout it from the rooftops, though you may want to. Just quietly open your heart and let God in. Okay, warning here, big churchy word coming. We worship what we call a triune God. That simply means we find three distinct ways to see, understand, and experience God. God the Father, Jesus the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit of God. That Holy Spirit is renewed in our lives at baptism. They are all the same Spirit, all part of what we celebrate tonight. So if you would like to rededicate your life to that triune God tonight, you can do so in prayers whispered silently during the silent night hymn as we conclude. If you'd like to explore that a little further, I would be glad to speak with you after the service concludes tonight. If you've never been baptized, let's talk about that too. I would encourage each of us to take a moment to rekindle that spirit tonight. It can be a public declaration, but it doesn't have to be. God hears all prayers. He'll hear you, and it really, it really isn't all. That's, that, that's all that really matters. The answer to the question is yes, it is all that matters. You pray and God listens and answers. You don't have to fly to Bethlehem tonight to find Jesus. His Holy Spirit is right here, right now. And another thing, as we prepare for communion, you are invited to receive the ceremonial body and blood of Jesus Christ too. And that's fine. We, we in the Methodist Church, as you know, celebrate an open communion. Uh, you do not have to be baptized. If you are searching, you are welcome to receive. If you're watching this from home tonight and would like to have someone bring you com communion over Christmas Day, please send me an email. My address should be popping up on your screen right about now. We will bring communion to anyone in Belton or Temple on Christmas Day. So Merry Christmas. Happy birthday, Jesus. Welcome home. Amen. Mm -hmm.